is the aim, the objective, the purpose of the campaign we have launched today, the campaign for free and fair elections. The acronym is CAFE. Honorable Mike Sevalu from the <coughs> South African Legislative Assembly, also from the NRM's neck. What's the substance in this uh, claims? Yeah, I, uh, I, first of all, I would like to thank the ambassador for for expressing his views, as he has clearly uh, told us what has been happening, and definitely that is his uh, human right. He's got a right to act and do what he deems or what he thinks is good for him and but, uh, but um, from the viewpoint of the NRM one uh, the, the, the listeners out there know uh, that there is uh, a government in place whose mandate was renewed through a popular mandate of the people of Uganda 68 percent and um, this government that uh, the, the government elect is legitimate uh, because it went through a democratic process uh, that involved all Ugandans and the Ugandans had an opportunity to express their free will so in terms of um, uh, the, 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 the demonstrations uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are watching but we know that behind us are the people and the people are supreme. You know, once you have the people's support, once your leadership is anchored in the support of the people, then you have good ground uh, for leading them. Because one thing we need to appreciate, and uh, uh, which my brother needs to appreciate, you know, he's been away for quite some time, but I think he had better come to terms with the realization that uh, the political landscape has since changed. In Uganda, they are emerging uh, serious political uh, parties, and one of them is the NRM, which is uh, a popular mass party with a huge following across the country. And um, we, we had some, some issues to do with the North, but right now we're enjoying support across the entire country. And our appeal is going beyond uh, regions because we are now enjoying legitimacy and massive support in all the regions as was clearly indicated uh, in, the, in the electoral results where we won in all the regions of this country. We've got a much bigger and better appeal to the youth and the massive support of the youth is something to write home about. The women have always been the bulk that have given serious support. So in terms of how we came up with our, our win, it was a legitimate win which we worked for uh, in terms of the manner and uh, a process in which we conducted our campaigns. We branded correctly. We had a full-time call center reaching out to all our supporters. We had billboards across the country. We had radio, TV adverts. We had newspaper ads. We repackaged ourselves and created a very good appeal amongst the youth. With the war in northern Uganda concluded, definitely our politics uh, gave, gave us a very good inroad in the northern Uganda and we got uh, very good support. So we conducted a, a campaign that gave us serious massive win and we are very confident about that our president addressed over over 250 rallies across the country and was supported by a system of uh, district officials 30 sub county 30 uh, parish 30 30 up to the village where we have 60,000 villages in so that massive you know campaign team definitely should not surprise anyone by registering a very good result. So all of that is available. And the Ugandans are much more sophisticated than they were before. They've really, they really appreciate this win. They acknowledge this win because they've been part of this win anyway. And so they indeed appreciate that. So our win is not something that can be, because uh, my brother definitely could have looked at other options. Because when I look at uh, the three who are leading, who led the demonstrations today, between them, I, I think they've got uh, less than 4% of the vote. 
because my brother here has something and uh, but that that clearly shows you the numerical strength who's counting is that the, the, the legitimate results but but I, I could benefit from your counting anyway if you have it so the, the the outcome of this and the kind of response that it has generated which has been negative and these guys have been isolated is a clear manifestation that the people out there know the truth about the electoral process that we've just concluded. So the fact that they didn't come out to engage and join this kind of uh, uh, activity clearly shows that they are not for it. And they know what is what in this aspect. So the outcome clearly shows the poor results of uh, the response, a clear indication of the poor results that they did get in the electoral outcome. So definitely it, 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 is, it is a freedom that they, they can enjoy, but uh, at the end of the day, I don't think there is anything serious that they are likely to gain. But my appeal, because definitely I'm one of those people who really appreciate us in building strong parties. And, and after, you've done, you, after you've suffered a loss, the best thing to do that I'd expect my brothers and sisters to be engaged with now is to do a SWOT analysis. What went wrong? Where was the mistake? Where did, what did they, what didn't they do right? So that they put more energies in rebuilding their parties. There's still room. There are five years to go. You can still go and put structures on the ground like we've done. And we've got very good lessons. There are best practices you can pick for MNRM in terms of the structures of the party up to the ground. You could emulate something like that and you never know come five years. You could uh, return a better performance. So for me, I would encourage them to engage the process of rebuilding their party so that they get some level of, uh, of support that would give them competitive, better competitive edge than was the case before. But otherwise, the idea of demonstrating and the idea of this and that is not going to do much because Ugandans did decide through a free and fair election where they all uh, decided uh, who should uh, lead them and how they should be led and our constitution article number one does give them that supremacy. power and supremacy they are the only ones that can give anyone leadership it's not through demonstrations it's not through petitions it's not through anything but you just have to make yourself appealing to them in terms of your programs, in terms of your packaging, in terms of the kind of messages that you give them so that they then you win their hearts. That is something NRM has successfully done and it is enjoying the next, it's going to enjoy the next five years uh, of leadership in a very legitimate way with the serious support of the people at a very good rate of uh, 68 percent. But uh, Definitely, I, uh, I, I do appreciate that it's not, it's not easy to manage and accept a defeat. Sometimes you may have to engage in some activities to, 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 to create a bit of a scene and a bit of, uh, it could be, actually I think it is diversionary in my view, but well, I don't think <clears throat> Ugandans can be diverted at this point in time. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. Tonight, what motives are the opposition harboring in regard to their calls for peaceful demonstrations? Our guests, Dr. Ambassador Dr. Olara Otunu, UPC President and former presidential candidate, and Honorable Mike Sebalo standing in for the NRM. He comes from the NRM neck, but substantively he's a member of the East African Legislative Assembly. That's the regional parliament. We're going for a break. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Let's offer you a credit card with real value and reward and enable you to shop in Uganda and at millions of retail outlets worldwide, including online shopping. Let's give you the power to borrow cash right when you need it.